श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्टम स्थापित ये न भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाति स्वपदाक नमो ओम विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नमने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारणी निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातिदेशतारणि जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासद गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण वेलकम एवरी वन टू अना द डे वेर वी डिस्कस वर्सेज ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम एंड गेन डेली मोटिवेशनल इंस्पिरेशन ऑन द बैथ ऑफ भक्ति जस्ट लाइक मलिने मोचनम पुंसा जल स्ना दिने दिने सकृत गीतामृत स्नानम संसार मलनाशनम Shripad Adi Shankar Acharya ji writes that just like bathing with soap water and clean water soap and clean water becomes soapy water by bathing with that the body becomes cleansed similarly by bathing from the messages of Bhagavad Gita the, the consciousness gets samsara malanashanam the, the impurities of repeated birth and death and the rajasik tamasik impressions that we receive from this world they are all washed away by studying shrimad bhagavatam and bhagavad gita and hearing hari katha it's very important um, the essence of everything is there in shrimad bhagavatam it has been described that sarva vedanta saram hi shri bhagavatam ishyate tad rasamrata triptasya na anyatra syatrati hi kvachit This verse has come in the Shrimad Bhagavatam, glorifying Shrimad Bhagavatam. So, what does the verse say? Sarva Vedanta Saram Hi. Look at the words. Sarva Veda Anta Saram Hi. Sarva means everything. Veda means either the Vedas or that which is worthy of knowing. Comes from the root word Vit. Hmm? Vit means to know. Veda means to know. So, either the Vedas or anything that's worthy of knowing. Sarva Veda Anta. anta means conclusion saram means essence and he means indeed shrimad bhagavatam is indeed the essence of the conclusion of all that has to be known through the vedas hmm? shri bhagavatam ishyat it's called shrimad grantra shrimad bhagavatam so if any of us don't have a shrimad bhagavatam at home then please get a copy and most importantly open and we should start reading that's most important we should get copies and we should open shrimad bhagavatam every day and try to study shrimad bhagavatam shrila prabhupad would say this that um, every sincere disciple shrila prabhupad had written a letter to his disciples and for all of us who are aspiring uh, to be the disciple of the disciple of the disciple the, the servant of the servant of the servant of the servant coming in the parampara Shri Prabhupada had written every sincere disciple should study Shrimad Bhagavatam 2 to 3 hours every day scrutinizingly <laughs> and understanding the meaning from different angles of vision Shri Prabhupada had written I can show you the reference 2 to 3 hours every day that's point number 1 second scrutinizingly understanding word by word and three from different angles of vision what the acharyas are writing how we can apply that in real life what are the different meanings that come grammatically devotionally how we understand this from different angles of vision mm-hmm. and at the same time shila prabhupada said this is the expression of sincerity every sincere disciple so if you are not able to study shrimad bhagavatam 2 to 3 hours at least we should start with 1 hour if that's not possible at least half an hour if that's not possible at least 15 minutes at least 15 let's make it one more minute extra like prabhupada said so minimum 16 minutes 16 rounds <laughs> ideally we should be uh, prabhupada started with 64 rounds right so that's like 64 minutes of reading shrimad bhagavatam one hour if not at least 32 rounds so that's half an hour if not at least 16 minutes that's 16 rounds so prabhupada said not a bead less than that which means not one minute lesser than that we should study shrimad bhagavatam every day I know one Mataji whom I recently uh, had the fortune of uh, associating with. Mataji is about sixty-five, sixty-six years old, older than my mother. <laughs> so I briefly got to hear and observe the Mataji in, in the association. 
So I saw that every single day, uh, this very sincere Mataji, uh, very advanced, very fixed up Mataji, every single day, she's studying Srimad Bhagavatam, every single day. Even at this age, every single day, morning chanting. And Mataji was mentioning to me from the time she started chanting, which is about 30 years or 35 years before, or maybe even longer. Maybe to be humble, she gave a very humble number. Maybe even before that, maybe 40, 45 years. That she has not missed one Brahmamurta chanting. Not one day is missed in the morning. <laughs> and fixed pattern. Irrespective of whatever time she goes off to sleep, she tries to go off to sleep early, but irrespective of whatever time she goes off to sleep, she wakes up at 3.45 in the morning. Isn't that inspiring? Even at the age of 65 or 66. Some of us, you know, I hope all of you at least, but I don't know about myself, if I will even survive that long, what to speak of performing bhakti at that age. So every single day, um, Waking up at 3.45. I asked her, what if you're sleeping at 10.30? She said, I still wake up at 3.45. I said, what if it's 11.30? She said, I still wake up at 3.45. I said, what if it's 1 o'clock? <laughs> I was trying to see what that tipping point was at which she would say, well, now I will sleep. But she didn't say that. So sincere. She said, even if it's 1 o'clock, it's, it's never 1 o'clock, she said. But even if it becomes so late, as she said, the latest I have seen is 11.30. <laughs> so she said, even if it's 11.30, I wake up at 3.45 and then I can catch up on sleep later, she said. And then, um, so I was I was asking her for her schedule, how she does it. And she was saying up to 4 o'clock, she gets ready, 4, 4, 5, 4, 10, she gets ready. Then from that time to 5 o'clock, she's just offering prayers, 45 minutes. Guru Vashtakam. Shikshashtakam, Shadgoswamyashtakam, Chaitanyashtakam, Nityanandashtakam. All the wonderful prayers, Radha Kripakatakshas Tavaraj, Nandanandashtakam, Nandanandanashtakam. All the beautiful uh, prayers to Giriraj Govardhan, Govardhanashtakam, Brinda Devi Ashtakam, Brindavanashtakam, Yamuna Ashtakam. So many Ashtakams, eight fold prayers, glorifying all these wonderful personalities in Brindavan. And it takes in Jagannath Ashtakam because she has deities of Jagannath, Baldev, Subhadra and Gornitai. So then it takes about 45 minutes. And then at 5 o'clock, Mataji starts chanting Japa and she chants straight uh, 32 rounds in one sitting, every single day in one go. I was blown away by the sincerity. She said, before I was doing 64 rounds, now I'm not able to because of so many responsibilities. I asked her, were you doing 64 rounds in one go? She said, no, I would split it. Many times I've done in one go also, but I would split it. I, I, then I asked her, how was the splitting like? <laughs> and she said, I would chant about 50 or 52 in the morning in one go. And then I would keep the remaining 10 or 12 for the day. So uh, I was very inspired. And then she said, after that, then I worship my deities. I worship my deities. And then she worships the deity with so much sincerity, offering so many prayers, not talking during deity worship, not doing anything else. Because when you are worshipping your deity, uh, it's, we have to be careful that the spit doesn't fall on Thakurji. So we have to be lip sealed. Is everyone able to hear and get the, the flow of the discussion? Yeah. So we haven't started a verse. It's not connected to any verse, but I'm just speaking some... Um, some inspiration in the heart because we are almost one hand distance from our Kartik Vrat. Right? This is already Dashami here, Vijay Dashami, Ram Vijayotsava. So many start their Kartik Vrat from Ekadashi, which is tomorrow. And many start from Purnima. Both are wonderful, whichever works. I prefer Ekadashi because it gives me another five days. <laughs> so either... If, if I do well in those five days, then it's counted as Kartik, the start of Ekadashi. And if not, at least it takes about five days to set into the mood because you can't like just like a switch get there. Like from tomorrow, I'm going to start my vrat and then it doesn't happen. So we dwindle, we dwindle our way and it takes about three, four days. So I, I, you know, either way, 
<laughs> you gain the whole month. So we are just speaking all this to gain inspiration. And I'm quoting an example of someone superior, materially, spiritually, vayovridha, jnana vridha, experienced in this world and also older in age. Because by this, this is the best way by which we can learn. Instead of saying, we should do this, we should not do this, etc. It's best we just glorify a Vaishnavi or a Vaishnav. So in that way, what happens is we get the benefit of doing Vaishnav Stuti. Consciousness gets cleansed. Krishna is having mercy on us because he's seeing that we are glorifying someone who's dear to him. And at the same time, we gain so much inspiration. On the path of Bhakti, we also always should look up to people who are better than us. And on the path of material life, we should always look up to people who are not as privileged as us. Because on the path of material life, if we compare with those who are materially more superior, then we will never be happy. Because money are numbers and numbers are unlimited. There's no upper limit. Somebody has 100,000, that's 1 lakh. Somebody has 10 lakh, somebody has 100 lakh, which is 1 crore. Somebody has 10 crores, somebody has 100 crores. There's no limit to how many zeros we can chase because they're numbers and numbers are unlimited. So if you look up to those who are materially more profound than us, then we will always, always feel that we are nowhere. So at, in material life, we should always look as examples to those who are not as privileged. So in that way, it brings in uh, santushti, which is satisfaction. Dayaya sarvabhuteshu santushtya yena kenava sarvendriya upashantya cha tushyati ashu janardhana. Bhagavatam describes, have mercy on everyone, be kind to everyone. Second, always be satisfied. Third, control your senses and offer them to Krishna. By doing these three things, Bhagavatam describes, Krishna is pleased and that too quickly. Tushyati ashu, very quickly, janardhana. Krishna is very quickly pleased. So, if you really want to know the three-point formula by which Krishna is pleased, one, dayaya sarva bhuteshu, by having compassion towards everyone. Second, being satisfied in all circumstances. And third, um, sarva indri upashantyacha, controlling the senses from negativity and engaging those senses in Krishna's service at all times. By this, Krishna is pleased. So on the path of material life, we look at examples who are not so privileged. But on the path of spiritual life, so that there's no complacency. We always look up to Vaishnavas who are doing better than us. So that we never feel we are advanced. So that we never feel that, oh yes, I have reached. We are always ready to put ourselves in a humble position. Because when we look at examples better than us, automatically the mind tells us, oh, I am nowhere. Look at this example. Tushta man tumi kishera Vaishnav. Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, oh rascal mind, what kind of Vaishnav are you? Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, Bhajore Bhajore Bhai Mana Ati Manda Gaura Gada Dhara Dvaita Prabhu Nityananda. <laughs> oh mind, oh foolish mind, Bhajore Bhajore Bhai Mana Ati Manda. This mind is fallen and it makes anyone fallen, anyone and everyone. Therefore, what's the way? Bhajo, do bhajan. Gaura Gada Dhara Dvaita Prabhu Nityananda. Worship the Panchatattu. Even Srila Rupa Goswami Pad, in work, one verse that he composed, um, <laughs> Srila Rupa Goswami Pad says, when I look at the example of Dhruva Maharaj, I feel I have not even started bhakti. Now, please tell me, is that true? Dhruva Maharaj is a great soul, no doubt. But nowhere close to Srila Rupa Goswami. Now, Rupa Goswami comes same, straight from the kunja, straight from the groves of Brindavan, Goloka Brindavan from Srimati Radharani's camp. So with all respect to Dhruva Maharaj, the position of Rupa Goswami is way higher, according to Brihad Bhagavatamrita, according to Rupa Goswami's Guru Maharaj, Srila Sanatana Goswami. <laughs> but Srila Rupa Goswami, in his natural humility, Bhakti Anukula Matra Karjero Svikar, Bhakti Pratikula Bha Barjan Angikar, Dainya Atma Nivedana Goptritve Varan Avashya Rakshibe Krishna Vishwasa Palan Shadanga Sharanagati Hoive Jahar Tahara Prarthana Suneshri Nanda Kumar. Krishna listens to the prarthana, the prayers of only those who are meek and humble. Even Jesus says in the Bible, only the humble and meek inherit the kingdom of God. <laughs> so the point is, Rupa Goswami in his natural humility, he says, look at Dhruva Maharaj. 
to remember his mantra, he was ready to stand on one leg. To remember his mantra, he was ready to give up eating and sleeping and even breathing and drinking water even. And all of this to attain Vaikuntha. <laughs> Srila Rupa Goswami Bhatt saying, here I am aspiring to get the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna and to remember my mantra, I can give up my eating and sleeping and drinking and standing on one leg with my arms raised. Rupa Goswami said, what kind of devotee am I? That's not true. <laughs> Dhruva Maharaj may chant hundreds and hundreds of names and impress the heart of Vishnu. But our Rupa Goswami Pad, he doesn't even have to chant one Hare Krishna Mahamantra. He can just say, ha! And Radha and Krishna are listening. <laughs> That's the quality of Rupa, Rupa Goswami's call. But in on the path of bhakti, this is the tradition. To those who are superior, we look up to them so that we are always, we put ourselves in the lower position. And in the material front, we look at people who are not that, that privileged so that we can have compassion. And yet at the same time, we can always have satisfaction. So about this Mataji, I was explaining, I'll take it a couple of notches higher now. Um, <laughs> so after what I described with respect to her waking up and chanting Japa and and worshipping the deities, or the Ashtakams, chanting Japa, and the worship of the deities. Then during the day, of course, she has cooking and other services, taking care of the family. I asked her, how many hours of Krishna Katha do you listen? So amidst this, she's doing her Bhakti Shastri at the age of 65. So she hears to those classes and she studies. So I asked her, how many hours of Krishna Katha? She said about three to four hours. Three hours of Krishna Katha, Mataji listens to. And she said, typically, although it's easier to hear Krishna Katha while cooking, I don't do that because I'm not able to attentively hear and take notes. She said, then the cooking stops because I'm hearing Krishna Katha and the cooking stops. I said, generally, when people hear Krishna Katha while cooking, the other thing happens. Cooking continues, but the hearing becomes slackened. But she said that uh, her hearing is so, <laughs> she gets so absorbed that the cooking stops. <laughs> Apart from that, in the evening at four o'clock, she has her niyam, her rule of reading Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, Chaitan Charitamrita. Ten minutes each. Ten minutes Bhagavad Gita, ten minutes Bhagavatam, ten minutes Chaitan Charitamrita. And she said, many times I have finished the whole of Bhagavad Gita, the whole of Bhagavatam, the whole of Chaitan Charitamrita. Just by this small Rule, 10 minute Bhagavad Gita, 10 minute Bhagavatam, 10 minute Chaitanya Chaitanya. And wherever she pauses, she puts the bookmark and continues the next day from there. Achha. Apart from that, she conducts classes for Matajis who are senior. Because, you know, when someone uh, is young, then on the base of the pyramid, they have a lot of friends. They have a lot of people of that same age. But as they get older and older and older and older and older, you see many leave. Either they get busy or they leave their body. So the apex on the top becomes thinner. So she said, for people who are older, I befriend them and I am doing classes for them every day. In the morning from 11.30 to 12.30, um, here American time, so which will be about 9 to 10 at night in India. So she has devotees from America and from India. And uh, she reads um, Bhagavatam with them, gives classes, prepares for that, answers questions. And many of them are brand, brand new, just not knowing anything about Krishna and she's guiding them on that path. Apart from that, morning, evening, she performs arati to her deity. So, of course, morning after deity worship, she offers arati. And then after bhoga, after the cooking is done, she offers naivedya to her Thakurji. And I was looking at how she offers also. Because many times for me, when I offer to my Thakurji, it's like, oh, I'm getting hungry. Bhananandani, please quickly finish eating now so that I can <laughs> so that I can get to the main part of the program that is feeding my belly. But I saw her for her offering to her deities was a meditation. She sat there and she offered all the prayers and then she was folding her palms and sitting there for about five minutes praying to Krishna, please accept my offering. I may have many shortcomings, please accept with so much humility. Of course, not speaking all that, but I saw her in a prayerful mood. Then in the evening also, she chants, Kiba Jaya Jaya Gaura Chandir Arati Koshobha, Jaya Jaya Radha Krishna Jugalam Milan, both these kirtans in front of the deities. 
After that, on her harmonium, all by herself, she's singing bhajans, Vaishnav Stupi, Vaishnav bhajans. So many wonderful bhajans. One day I saw, she chanted the whole Govinda Damodara Stotram, which is about 71 verses by Sripad Bilba Mangala Thakur. She was sitting all by herself. There's no microphone, there's no kartal, no mridanga. And she was playing on her harmonium. Very beautifully, she was Govinda Damo Dharmadhaveti. Govinda Damo Dharmadhaveti. Govinda Damo Dharmadhaveti. Govinda Damo Dharmadhaveti. Each verse. Devotees can read that when you have time. You can find it online. Um, it's called as the, it starts with Agre Kuruna Matha Pandavanam Dushasane Narita Vastra Kesha Krishna Tada Krosha Dananya Natha Govinda Dhamo Dharamadhaveti by Sri Padbilla Mangala Thakur. Beautiful, beautiful stuti of Krishna. Simple, simple, sweet stories are explained, small packets. And then, um, of course, our Prabhuji has already put it, I think, in the chat. Um, so you can click there and you can find it for yourself and you can read the meaning. It's very beautiful. Very beautiful meditation. In Kartik, you can chant maybe two verses a day. So in 30 days, you can chant 60 verses or something like that. Two, three verses a day. Very sweet. Very, very sweet. They're simple, small, small packets. You know, kids like to have these candies. They're small and they're sweet. <laughs> so they can't stop at one. So these are like the 71 candies of Krishna consciousness. You can just put one in your mouth and drown yourself in the sweetness of Krishna Katha. So she chanted the whole thing. And then uh, I felt that she's chanting it all by herself. Then I picked up the Mridanga and I started playing. And when I started playing, then I realized that was the last stanza. She was at Vaktum Samartho Pinavakti Kaschit. I didn't realize. So then I felt that Krishna wanted to take her service. As soon as I came with my Mridanga, Krishna said, now, chalo, you go. <laughs> the hastuti is over. <laughs> you keep your murthanga down. So then she chants like that. And I observe throughout the day, no unnecessary talking. Absolutely no unnecessary talking. No giving advice to anyone. If somebody, like I would go and ask her for advice. I would ask her principles that she learned in her life. What are some things that through experience she learned? And then she would tell me with examples where in life she learned what. But apart from that, she would not advise anybody being absorbed in her own schedule. So I asked her, when you're chanting so much and you're performing so much bhakti, does it become dry? Do you ever feel, oh, you know, I feel lonely, uh, you know, because her kids are settled and they also have kids. And so she's a grandmother. So I was thinking, I, I asked Mataji that, do you feel lonely? Do you feel that, uh, you know, there's no one to talk? Or I have so much time, I don't know what to do. She said, no, actually, 24 hours are less for me. There's so much to do and there's so little time. And I asked her, so does your taste in reading and chanting, has it bettered with time? She said, yes. She said, before I used to read and chant only as a duty. But now I really like to do it. She said, even when I chant my japa in the morning and it's about 50 rounds she used to before, now she does 32. She said, yeah. I asked her, do you feel a drag? Do you feel monotonous? She said, no. I feel like I'm able to offer Krishna my heart with so many feelings inside. And I saw she never criticized anyone. Even when there were opportunities where I, I thought any, any normal, um, let's say, irresponsible, inattentive devotee would slip into conversations and start adding into their own purports. But I saw that she was, Vacho Vegam was at its best. So it's very, very inspiring. Throughout the day, even if somebody told anything to her, she would just, because sometimes, you know, it's, it's possible that, um, um, you know, even when we are performing bhakti, not every part of our day uh, is as favorable as we would think. Sometimes something would pop up. Somebody would say something, something reversal, what not expected would come up. But I saw her throughout. She was um, um, very, very sweet and self-controlled with her speaking, with her eating. Um, and I offered my obeisances and I said that, Mataji, I, I feel so purified being in your association. And I felt that I'm in the association of someone very advanced. 
So she said, no, no, I'm not doing anything. I wish I could do more. And then she was quoting examples of those devotees whom she looks up to. And it was like nectar for me. <laughs> it was nectar for me, for more, more inspiration, how devotees are performing bhajan. So dear devotees, we are mentioning this for two reasons. One, tad rasamrita triptasya na anyatra syadratihi kochit. Bhagavatam describes if we taste devotion through Srimad Bhagavatam and chanting the holy name, then we will not have taste for anything else in this world. If there is taste for other things, Bollywood songs, eating outside, discussing other topics, criticizing Vaishnavas, wasting our time. If these inclinations are there, it just shows us that there's lack of bhajan. Lack of bhajan. If we increase our chanting, if we increase our service, three things, we have to take care of three things. One, Professional life, second, family life, third, spiritual life. Three things. In a, in a, in a 24-hour clock cycle, we may see 8 to 10 hours goes for professional life. You can see about 6 to 7 hours may go in sleeping. Now, the remaining time that we have, we have to positively split between family life and spiritual life. If any of these three starts dwindling, it's like a tripod on which you keep a video camera. So if one of these three legs dwindle, you'll see the video camera of life will come down. Let's say there is only professional life. There's a lot of money, but health comes down. Family life, we have no time for the family and no spiritual cultivation. Let's say we have professional life and family life, but no bhakti. That's like cleaning the cage and keeping the bird hungry. <laughs> the soul is crying for bhajan and the body is well kept. Let's say... There's bhajan going on and professional life, but no family life. Then the family will complain. So we must make sure that all three are maintained. And even in spiritual life, there are twofold responsibilities. Janma sarthaka kari, karapara upakar. We have to, the secret of doing good to others is secretly doing good to oneself. Which is our morning program, what we were discussing yesterday. What we give ourselves the food that we feed ourselves, then we will be rejuvenated to share with others. So twofold, why I said this whole story. One, for inspiration on the path of bhakti. That by chanting, by reading, by doing this sincerely, systematically, consistently. Sincerely, systematically, consistently. By doing this every single day, we will see that our taste betters. Our taste in the path of bhakti will increase. Our taste for lower things will come down. And it is possible. I, I saw that in the service of that Mataji. And she said she's been doing consistently. And I asked her. And very humbly, yet honestly, she said she has not missed even one day of the morning chanting. The morning program. His Grace Radhisham Prabhu from Pune. In one class he was explaining that one devotee wanted to meet Radhisham Prabhu. Because he was coming to Pune. That's where His Grace Radhisham Prabhu serves, has been serving for so many years. So, you know, out of many of my superiors, he's one of my very worshipable superiors. So he was mentioning that one devotee wanted to meet His Grace Radhisham Prabhu in Pune. So Radhisham Prabhu asked him, so what time should we meet? He said, I'm crossing through Pune at three o'clock in the morning. So Radhisham Prabhu said, I will be up. I can meet you. Then the devotee later sent a message that there's some traffic or there's some accident on the road and I will reach Pune by 6.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning. So Radhisham Prabhu said, oh, unfortunately, that is my chanting time and I cannot compromise. Said, you can come. You please sit at the end of the temple. You can take a corner. You chant your rounds. I will chant my rounds. We can meet later. Because if you come... We will, your chanting is also gone. My chanting is also gone. And then we're talking other topics at six o'clock in the morning. So this sincerity, this uh, steadfastness, we have to put ourselves through. Discipline is needed. Absolutely without discipline, what kind of disciple is that? Disciple means discipline. There must be shasan. There must be beating. Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj would say. <laughs> Guru means karanadhar. Guru Karanadharam, he who can twist the ear of the disciple. <laughs> Actually, the word Karanadharam means the captain on the ship of the human form. So, Nridehamadhyam Madhyam Sulabham Sudurlabham Plavam Sukalpam Guru Karanadharam Maya Nukulen Navasvateritam Puman Bhavabdim Nataretsa Atmaha. 
Bhagavatam 11th canto 20th chapter text 17 describes the soul as a passenger. Human form is the ship. The ocean is birth and death. And the captain is Sri Guru. So there the captain is Karanadhar. But in Sanskrit, the word Karana means ear and Dharana means to hold. So Guru Karanadhar also means to hold the ear. So Srila Gaur Govinda Maharaj would say, Guru means Karanadhar and disciple means discipline. The, disi the discipline must be inflicted and the disciple must take that lovingly. So we have to discipline ourselves. We can't be in the army without discipline. We can't have professional life without discipline. We can't succeed academically without discipline. Without planning our day and without being disciplined, we can't even manage the finances in the home for the expenses and the inflow of every month. Without discipline, we can't even train our kids because then the kids will grow up to be us. <laughs> so we have to set good examples. And similarly, without discipline, success in Krishna consciousness is not possible. So that's the first point. Second point, because we are on, on the brink of starting our Kartik Brat, we have to inspire ourselves. Not just through philosophy and, you know, do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. Yes, that's good too, but it, living examples give in more inspiration. Right? They're given more inspiration that, yes, it is possible. When we speak about Haridas Thakur, sometimes the mind, the atheistic mind says, oh, but that was 500 years ago. We live in a different generation. But when we talk about those Vaishnavas on the planet or in the same generation, it really inspires. So just to share inspiration of my heart, uh, I thought of sharing this. So this can be titled and taken as our meditation for Karthik 2022.